North Korea has really dropped out of the Australian news cycle in the last couple of weeks. And partly that's to do with the Boston bombings, but also North Korea's rhetoric has really begun to die down. Now, I think the initial reporting of North Korea's threats was almost media saturation of the issue. And I think that this really had the impact of exaggerating the overall threat that North Korea posed. Now, certainly the situation was very serious and it could have escalated. But I think what we need to realise is that North Korea doesn't want to go to war. In fact, if it did go to war, that would certainly see the current leadership lose power. North Korea's war rhetoric is for domestic consumption. And if a war was to break out on the peninsula, it would most certainly be due to a miscalculation rather than the intent of one side to actually go to war. The good news is that I think a miscalculation is highly unlikely. I base this on North Korea's history of manufacturing crisis and then carefully de-escalating tensions and then doing their best to get whatever they can out of that crisis. And I think that although the new North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, is uh, young and inexperienced, I think that there are a lot of senior military officials around him that will make sure that he doesn't overstep the mark. In my opinion, the last few months show that Kim Jong-un is just as good as his predecessor at manufacturing a crisis and then de-escalating tensions. And now we actually see the North Koreans are trying to get whatever they can out of the last couple of months. So we see them going to Mongolia to ask for food aid. And we also see them outlining conditions for which they would accept diplomatic talks with the United States. So what has North Korea done over the last couple of months? Let's review it quickly. In December last year, they had a missile launch. In February this year, they had their third and most successful to date nuclear weapon test. And in the last couple of months, they've threatened everything that they possibly can. They've cut their military hotlines with South Korea. They've cancelled the 1953 armistice, and they've also closed the joint industrial complex at Kaesong. So despite all of North Korea's threats and all of the actions that it has engaged in the last couple of months, North Korea was very careful not to engage in any of the conventional risks that it has done in the past. So it didn't fire on any South Korean um, disputed territory. There were no known illegal incursions into South Korean waters and it didn't cause any naval incidents at sea, which it has in the past. Also after the passing of the 15th of April, I think that there was a collective sigh of relief because there wasn't another missile or nuclear test. Uh, the 15th of April being significant because it's the birthday of, of Kim Il-sung and North Korea likes to time its provocations with significant dates. So where does this leave North Korea now? Well, North Korea has really no other option but to angle for talks with the United States or try and get concessions from the international community. So why does North Korea want talks? Well, it might think that through talks it can gain concessions from the United States, it can gain more legitimacy, or basically just get more attention from the United States. If North Korea isn't successful in getting talks, all of its efforts over the last couple of months to elevate tensions haven't been wasted. In fact, uh, North Korea has been able to test the new South Korean and Chinese administrations. And by showing this strong face, it's also been able to win a lot of fans domestically. So where does this leave us now and what role should Australia play in this whole situation? Luckily, I think Australia is really well placed to make a positive contribution to easing tensions on the peninsula. Australia is a middle power and in many ways it's a leader in the region. And I think that because it's not directly involved in the situation, it has some flexibility. Now, I think that the issue of North Korean denuclear, denuclearization is something that can be put on hold for the moment. Um, from my perspective, I don't think North Korea has any good reason to give up its nuclear weapons. And I think that the talks could actually be focused towards uh, another issue. So, for example, the talks could be about um, finally creating an armistice and a peace treaty between North and South Korea. And we could leave the issue of denuclearization um, for another time. Okay. If North Korea is talking, that's preferable to it ramping up threats and conducting other missile and nuclear launches. And I think that down the track, there could also be the possibility of new multilateral talks. In particular, I'm envisaging something similar to the six-party talks, but uh, with fewer parties. So, for example, it could involve the United States, South Korea, North Korea and China. And by changing the number of uh, participants in the talks, there's possibly more room for progress. And it also removes the stigma of uh, the six-party talks. 
um, which North Korea has said it will never return to. In terms of improving Australia's communication lines with North Korea, I actually think the decision to postpone establishing a North Korean embassy in Canberra was a mistake and that we should really rethink our position on this. Having a North Korean embassy in Australia could uh, really have a lot of benefits. Uh, the final area where I think that Australia can make a contribution is through improving the humanitarian situation in North Korea. Uh, in the last week we see five UN aid agencies and their concerns about the sanctions that have been levelled against North Korea. In particular they say that although the sanctions aren't targeted against North Korea's humanitarian aid, they are receiving less funding and that is preventing them from, from delivering medical aid to uh, average North Koreans. Finally, I think there's one other way that Australia can contribute and I think that that is in trying to remind the United States and South Korea not to get too bogged down in the missile and nuclear tests that North Korea conducts and to also be mindful of the asymmetric risks that North Korea poses. Um, North Korea is involved in cyber attacks, GPS jamming and it also is involved in a lot of illegal activities like uh, US counterfeiting and human trafficking. I think that Australia can improve the situation by reminding its allies where other priorities lie.